In the video for part one of section P2, we looked at the first two objectives. Today we'll look at the last three objectives, simplifying radicals, rationalizing denominators, and looking at rational exponents, which just means you have fractions in your exponents. So we're gonna start by looking at simplifying radicals. So when we simplify radicals, we wanna make sure it's in simplest form. So three things we wanna look for to make sure it's in simplest form. Make sure all possible factors have been removed from the radical, which means any perfect squares, if it's a square root, perfect cubes, if it's a cube root, have been taken out. All fractions have radical-free denominators. In college algebra, we don't ever want to write a radical in the bottom of a fraction, so we need to rationalize it. And make sure the index of the radical is reduced. That's going to deal with the rational exponents when we get there. So let's just start and look at an example. We have um, simplifying radicals right here. So if we look at this, first notice that on your notes, I wrote this as the cube root of 24. I have changed it to the square root of 24. So mark, put a little mark through that three right there so we don't see it. So what we wanna do is find a perfect square that goes into 24, which means a number that has a square, perfect square root that goes into 24. So in this case, 24 could be written as four times six. So what that means when we're simplifying it, that is the square root of four times the square root of six. And then we know the square root of four is two. We can't simplify the square root of six anymore, so we just leave it. So two square root of six would be our final answer. Same thing over here on part B. This originally was the cube root of 48. We very rarely have to simplify cube roots, so I'm changing them to square roots to make it more of what you will be doing in class. So delete that cube to make sure you um, scratch it out or something so you only have the square root of 48. And we have to find a perfect square that goes into 48. If you need to, make a list of some of your perfect squares. I'm gonna write some out here if you want them so that you have them to use. So you would have one, four, 16, oh, I forgot nine in there, 25, 36, all of these are perfect squares, so take numbers from here that will go into 48. Try to pick your largest one to make your life easier. In this case, this would be 16 times three equals 48. And then you, that again is square root of 16 times square root of three. So this would be four radical three when we simplify it at the end. So part C is the square root of 75 x cubed. This time I'm adding some variables into it. Start with just looking at the number. Let's simplify the square root of 75. So looking at our perfect squares that we just wrote, 25 goes into 75 three times. So 25 times three is 75. So again, you don't have to rewrite this every time. I just am just so you can see it. Square root of 25 times square root of three would give us Five radical three. So that's the number part. Now we need to look at separating or simplifying x cubed or square root of x cubed. So when we look at this, remember this is like having a two out here. So this is what I tell my students. If you know how to do it, teachers told you something different, that is fine. But how many times does two go into three? Two can go into three one time. So that means I need to bring out one x outside my radical. And when I divide that in there, it goes in there one time and I have one left over, so then I would have one inside. So then if I put those two together, I would have a five on the outside, an X on the outside, and on the inside I have a three, and then I also have a X from inside. I did that as two separate things. If you're good at simplifying them, do it all together, that's fine. Um, I just wanted to show you the variables and the numbers separately. So over here, same thing, we'll kind of do work this one together so you can see it. This is the cube root of 24. So here I have to find a perfect cube that goes into it. So perfect cubes would be like one, because if you did one times one times one, another one would be eight, that's two times two times two, and then the next one would be 27, which is three times t three times three, and so forth, are perfect cubes. So in this case, with the cube root of 24, eight goes into 24, three times, this would be eight times three, and then I still have this a to the fourth. And then simplifying, the cube root of eight is two. You can use your calculator if you need to. And then the cube root of three, I can't do anything with, so I know that it's still gonna be cube root of three here. 
And then again, look at our variables and our numbers. So a to the fourth, three goes into four one time, so I bring out an a. When I do that, I have one left over when I subtract those two, so then I would have also an a inside. So that one I kind of simplified a little bit, didn't write as much out. You do what you need to do to make it work for you. And our last one in simplifying radicals um, also is going to go back to the rules that we looked at in part one. So notice I have the fourth root of 5x to the fourth. Since this four and this four are the same, they cancel each other out. And remember, our answer is just 5x. Make sure you pay attention to if those exponents are the same as the index makes your life a lot easier. So a little more on simplifying radicals. Um, if we want to add and subtract them, then we need to make sure that we have like radicals. That means they have the same index and radicand. So for example, square root of two, three square root of two, and one half square root of two are all the same because they all have the square root of two. But like square root of three and square root of two would not be because the numbers underneath the square root are not the same. So to determine whether two radicals can be combined, a lot of times you have to simplify it first to make them so that they do have like radicals before you can add or subtract them. So for example, let's look at part A right here, putting them together. The, notice the square roots are not the same to start with, so we're gonna have to simplify those and see what we get. So let's start by simplifying two square root of 48. So again, we're gonna need to find a perfect square. We already simplified the square root of 48, but I'm gonna write it out again. 48 is 16 times three. So then this would be two times the square root of 16 times the square root of three which would be two times four times the square root of three, multiplying those outside numbers. So we have eight square root of three. And then we're gonna have minus, we need to do the same thing with our 27. So 27 would be three, and then it's nine times three. So this would be three times square root of nine times square root of three. Which would be three times three times square root of three. Keep that minus sign in between them all the time. So three times three is nine square root three. So now when we look at this, the square root of threes are the same. So when we combine them, we just add or subtract these, the numbers in front depending on what it's asking you to do. In this case, I'm subtracting. So eight minus nine is negative one, and then you keep the radical the same. It would not change. So negative one radical three, or you could just write negative radical three would be the same thing if you don't wanna put the one in front. Either way is fine. So then over here on part B, we're actually gonna do cube roots. So go back and think about those perfect cubes that I wrote on the examples before, and I have 16. So remember eight was a perfect cube. So we're gonna have the cube root, 16 would be eight times two, and then I still have that X in there. So then the cube root of eight is two, and then I can't do anything with the cube root of two, and when this exponent is smaller than my index, I can't take out anything. So this would be left inside a two x, and then we're gonna have minus in here because I'm subtracting again. The cube root, and we have 54. Think of my perfect cubes. I had 27, 27 goes in there twice. And then I have an x to the fourth. So the cube root of 27, that would be three times three times three. Use your calculator if you need to, which is three. Two I can't do anything with, so it's just gonna stay inside the cube root. And then x to the fourth, three goes into four one time, so I bring out one x and I would have one remainder left inside. So notice, forgot my three over here, notice that these radicals are exactly the same. So we add or subtract the numbers in front. So I have two and a three x, those don't go together. So you could either just leave it written like this. You could leave it written two, cube root of two x minus three x, cube root of two x, since we can't put them together. Or if you wanted to factor out the two x, the cube root of two x, and then put the two minus three x in parentheses, you could. Either way would give you a correct answer on how it's written. So it's just kind of up to you how you like to write it. So that would be simplifying radicals. Next, we're gonna look at rationalizing denominators. Um, I say and numerators, we actually are not going to rationalize numerators. They do it in this section, but we don't ever have to do it in college algebra. We only have to do denominators, so that's all we're gonna do. So to rationalize a denominator, again, it says or numerators, but we're not gonna do numerators. I'm pretty sure I took that out of your notes. I just didn't get it out of the PowerPoint. 
if we have a minus b radical m or a plus, this should have a b in front of it, b radical m, multiply both numerator and denominator by what we call a conjugate. So a conjugate is just the opposite. So a minus b radical m, the conjugate is a plus. The sign just changes in between it. This one here was plus, so the conjugate would be minus. And again, we're going to put a b in front of that to make that work. I actually, in your notes, put the b in front of it. I just hadn't changed my PowerPoint. So if we don't have anything plus or minus, if we just have a radical m on the bottom, the conjugate is just radical m itself that you would multiply by to get rid of it. So let's look at a few examples. We want to rationalize. So we want to get rid of the square root or whatever's on the bottom. So I need to get rid of this square root of 3. So to do that, since there's no adding or subtracting, I'm just going to multiply top and bottom of the fraction by whatever that square root is. So then when we simplify, 5 times square root of 3 would just be 5 square root 3. Remember, you don't put them together on the top. On bottom, we have to multiply all this out. We have to take 2 times square root of 3 times square root of 3. So they would have 2. And then square root of 3 times square root of 3, they're both inside, would be square root of 9. So this would be 5 square root of 3 over the square root of 9 is 3. So this would be 2 times 3 down here, 6 on the bottom. And that would be our final answer. For part B, since I have subtraction, this is where the conjugate comes in. And I have to multiply the top and the bottom by the conjugate. Since it's 1 minus radical 5, the conjugate would be 1 plus radical 5 on top and bottom. So when I do this, I always say to make it easy, don't distribute that 2 through. Just keep it out here. 2 and leave the conjugate in parentheses, 1 plus radical 5. It'll make simplifying easier at the end. When we're multiplying the bottom, because they're conjugates, we can make a little shortcut. You only have to multiply the first things together. 1 times 1 is 1. And multiply the last two together. So I have negative radical 5 times positive radical 5, which just would give, give us minus 5. It would be the square root of 25, which then goes to 5. So if we simplify here, we have 2, 1 plus radical 5 on top. On bottom, 1 minus 5 is negative 4. And then since I can simplify this 2 and this negative 4 can reduce, we need to reduce it. 2 goes into both of them. So on top, I would just have the 1 plus radical 5, and on bottom, I would have negative 2 as our final answer. So the last thing we have to look at is um, rational exponents and kind of some definitions of rational exponents. And basically, it's just being able to rewrite them. Knowing that a to the 1, 1 over n is the same thing as the square root of n is a good thing to like keep in mind and know and have for you. So that's if it's a 1 on top, it just goes to the square root. But here's some other ones down here. If we have a to the m in, remember we can rewrite it. You could take the m out. So these are all just different ways to notate the exact same thing. Just something that you need to be able to recognize when you're working through problems. When we're doing this, know when you're rewriting it, you have a number to a fraction and we put it into a radical. The number on top of your fraction would be on the outside. And the number on the bottom is what your index is. Or you could write it with the M on the inside. It doesn't matter inside or outside if you think about our rules from part one video. So when we're doing rational exponents, um, if you're just actually evaluating like in part A, I highly recommend you just plug this into your calculator. So I would have out a calculator and just like this, I would plug that straight into the calculator. Make sure your parentheses are all in the right place. I suggest you do this and try it. You're going to get a decimal. Change that decimal into a fraction. We don't ever want decimals, so the answer to this would be 1 over 16. And I just plugged it into the calculator. But make sure you give the answer as a fraction. Over here, because I have variables, I can't plug it into my calculator, but we can simplify it using our rules that we know, even though our exponents are fractions. So start by multiplying out the big numbers. Negative 5 times 3 is negative 15. And then we need to put our x's together. To put our x's together, we need to add, remember, our exponents. So we need to take 5 thirds and add negative 3 fourths. So you could do that by hand and get common denominator. I suggest you just plug that into your calculator and get an answer. And if you plug it into your calculator, you would get 11 over 12. So here is your answer. Um, if you needed to do it, if you want to do it by hand, because remember on the Alex test, you will not get a calculator probably for that. 
Common denominator would be 12 that they both go into. We would need to multiply by four over here, which means I have to do it on top. Here I'd have to multiply by three, so I have to do it on top. So it would give us 20 over 12 plus negative nine over 12. And when you're adding and subtracting fractions, you just work with the top. So 20 minus nine is 11. And on bottom, we keep the 12 if you're working it out by hand. And that is the end of P2. When you come back to